Hey guys, this is David Jelks from Factor 3 Fitness. And I wanna actually just introduce you to, uh, the, reintroduce you to this fist ball. Um, you know, I met it quite a few years ago, I guess probably over 20 years ago when it first kind of arrived in one of the facilities I was working at. And I didn't really have much use for it. I think back then we called it a physio ball. So of course, that, you know, I assume you had to be injured to use it. Uh, what I'm finding, of course, now, I've used this for many, many years now in my, in my practice, is that it actually using things like this really diminishes in injury because it actually uh, it works with something that, something that we call proprioception. And proprioception just refers to the, the, the messaging between the joints and, of course, the nervous system. And it's really about coordinating all the, um, the, the subtle aspects of movement patterns. I mean, we really need that feedback mechanism between the joints, of course, and the um, the joints and the uh, the nervous system because we want that well kind of tuned uh, coordination. So you know, there's rotation that's required. There's uh, there's uh, rotation around the joints, rotation around the axis. Uh, there's the timing between uh, antagonist and agonistic muscles. Um, we want muscles to fire in a certain pattern around the joints just to create a great stability. So there's a lot of factors there to think about when you're training. So. Um, you know, I really incorporate this quite a bit into in my training and to uh, into all the stuff I do with my clients because we really want to force um, the core uh, musculature to really have to, to have to fire it, to really to force it in. Um, when you're using benches and machines, of course, they really they diminish um, the need for that that proprioception because if you're using a machine, of course, it guides itself. You have a fixated uh, um, track to run on, so there's no lateral instability. Right, so so you, you're missing a bit of that information because the machine is doing it for you. Uh, if you're using a bench, of course, uh, it's a, a bit more unstable than a machine, of course, uh, but still the bench is quite solid and you can really anchor yourself well, well to do produce a lot of force. And and the Swiss ball is just a really great tool to kind of bring in all the the little pieces that don't get addressed by using machines or using by or by using a um, a flat bench. One, uh, and again, one of my favorite exercises uh, on this course, or the favorite type of training I like doing on this, is anything uh, trunk-based, abdominal-based. So we can play around with it quite a bit. And, and I like actually um, really challenging myself. And you know, because I've been primarily, I've been a bodybuilder and powerlifter for years, I got involved in martial arts and got involved in yoga and Pilates because I found I could move very well. I, I could produce a lot of force in a straight line, but that was about it. So really, uh, really embracing things like yoga, really embracing things like um, uh, Pilates and martial arts and Qigong and all these beautiful forms of movement, I realized that you know I'm more physically self-expressive. I can do more things. I'm more dynamic because I, I really incorporate a whole, a whole uh, uh, various aspect of movement into my training. Yes, I love the strength training. I love the power and I love the physical, the physical force we, we can produce through this style of training. But this, this, this is actually a lot of fun. It's kind of cool. All right. <clears throat> So what we're going to do today is a Swiss ball pike. Um, now, when you get on the ball, this is a 65 centimeter ball. I'm six feet tall, so this works for me. Um, now, this is a core-based exercise. One of the challenges, uh, of course, when we're doing this type of work is that one, we ha our wrist needs to be flexible enough to be able to put my wrist flat down the floor. Because of the society that we, we spend so much time on a computer uh, keypad, our wrist has a tendency to be bent and in flexion all the time. So this is quite an exaggerated extension pattern. So for a lot of people, this could be challenging. So make sure you stretch your wrist out uh, well before you do this. Secondly, I'm gonna put the ball here on my shins and I'm going to go into a pike position, which means I'm just gonna push my hips up in the air. Now, it's interesting, the thought process, of course, people try to bring the ball forward, but I'm actually not doing anything with the ball at all. My, my intention is to pull up to my pelvic floor. So if I tighten the bladder and rectal muscles, it'll fire my lower abdominal wall and get my glutes out active and center the body's energy reach to the rear around my sacrum which is my mechanical center of gravity so from here i'm going to simply anchor and then lift my tailbone up so i initiate it from my tailbone not from the ball the balls are going to be dragged along passively as a part of the exercise and i'm going to come up and up keep pushing those hips, hips up as high as i can go now i've got some really good extension here blood's rushing to my head now if i want to challenge this even more right lots of lots of uh, core bracing here my feet are quite relaxed i'm going to come up into a straight leg position, bring it down, reset my position again, and up, and down, and reset. <laughs> 
So what's great about activities like this is they really force thousands of little tiny reactions inside the joints, which really lend itself to producing power. So for those of you that are very strength focused and more, you know, more linear in a lot of your training, um, the addition of, of Swiss ball type activities, any core based activity that offers lots of instability, forces you really to think about it, you'll find it'll lend tremendous amount of uh, benefit to your general strength training diminish the risk of injury and make you a much more well-rounded athlete. It's fun to have the strength, it's fun to have the mass, but it's really been a fun to move in ways that are very, very unsuspected to the average person. So, so uh, make, sure you, uh, make sure you practice as well, wear a crash helmet if necessary, and uh, yeah, enjoy the pike, you know, explore the Swiss ball. It's such, a, it's such a great modality to add into your practice.